hear this. Uh, is it, this is actually, like I say, this topic that I want to talk to you a little bit about today, it's actually my favorite topic out of all the topics. And I mean, I got some, there's some things that really light my fire that I like to talk about, about the things of God. But this is my favorite topic to talk about. But before I do that, I just have to say, I think it's only appropriate. I want to pass on to you the fact that there is a wonderful, dynamic, man of God who has been in our midst for decades. I count him to be one of my dearest friends who made successfully made the transition from this earthly existence that has no shortage of problems into his eternal home this week. And I'm not going to begin to approach the topic that I wanted to talk to you about until I talk about this wonderful man. Uh, and let me just say this. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there is no more transparent, honorable words to hear about the legacy of somebody's life than when you hear it from the people who worked with this person, shoulder to shoulder, over a long period of time, with one exception. The only exception is the people who are actually a part of this person's family. The people who not only worked with them, but lived with them for the entirety of their life. As far as I'm concerned, there, that, is, that is the most accurate description that you can get. And so I would, first of all, like to read this that was written about our dear Pastor Scott Ranny from the Southgate Church. It says, it is with a very sad heart that we share with you, our Southgate Church family, that our beloved Pastor Scott Ranny went home to be with our Lord early Monday morning, September 21st, 2021. The love of his life, his wife, Pastor Arnie Ranny, was by his side. Pastor Scott was initially hired in August of 1986 to work with the 91st Psalm Christian School, which is a ministry of Southgate Church. And he began a sports program for the school and taught junior high and high school students with an emphasis on math. And on January 4th, 1989, 91st Psalm Ministries awarded Pastor Scott a certificate of recognition as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ after he completed his ministerial leadership training. And Pastor Scott, along with his wife, Pastor Arnie, then began attending the 91st Psalm School of Ministry and both graduated with associate degrees of ministerial studies on May 17th in 1992. And they were both ordained as pastors here at Southgate Church. Pastor Scott was named principal of the school in the summer of 1992 and served in that capacity until health problems forced him to retire in 2014. And Pastor Scott served continuously on the church and school board from 1992 until his passing. Over the years, he served the body of Christ here at Southgate Church in a variety of ways he not only ministered to the students in the school, but he also ministered to college-age young adults through a group that met in his home. And he and his wife, Pastor Arnie Ranney, ministered to many struggling married couples using their own vast experiences, knowledge, and wisdom of the Word of God to heal and restore relationships. And they also taught many adult Bible classes and led groups mentoring others in the Lord. Pastor Scott and Arnie have been dedicated members of our church family since the mid-1980s and have been instrumental in laying the foundations of the church that we are today. During more than 35 years of serving here at Southgate, Pastor Scott has remained a faithful, fully committed member a prayer warrior and mentor to many. 
watching Southgate Church and its members grow and thrive in their knowledge and service to the Lord Jesus Christ was Pastor Scott's joy in life. And even after his life-changing health diagnosis, he continued to be a pastor, a mentor, a counselor, a connect group host, and a leader. And he was on the men's prayer team. And he could be found cheering on the Eagles at various sporting events. And he led by example and practiced what he preached. He was a godly man who was always willing to share his knowledge and love of the Lord. Pastor Scott will be missed, but he leaves behind a legacy that will continue for generations to come. And his favorite saying was, do not give your joy away, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And even during life's most difficult challenges, he not only lived his life with joy, he wanted to share that joy with everyone he knew. We love you, Pastor Scott, and we miss you, until, and we will miss you until we see you again in heaven. Now, as wonderful as that tribute is from those of us who worked with Pastor Scott, again, I can't overemphasize how important it is to consider what a person's personal family members, how they feel about you. You know, all of us as parents long for our children, and all of us as as that are married, long for our spouses to, to, to have a, a good feeling about us. But listen to some of these words. First of all, from uh, Adam Ranney, his son, Adam Ranney, one of his sons, to my hero, my mentor, my coach, my teacher, my pastor, and my friend, I have called you dad my whole life. And this morning, at 12.23 a.m., I got to watch you show us one more thing. You showed us how to enter into heaven and end well. I love you beyond words and already miss you, but you and I both know you are right where you belong, and that's with Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, the author and finisher of your faith. He ordered your steps when you were younger, and even when you no longer had steps, he then carried you. Your favorite poem was Footprints in the Sand, and you taught us all how to fight the good fight of faith and how to finish well. God authored your life, and he wrote your story all the way until your last breath. Your faith is finished, Dad. You no longer have to believe in God. You now behold him. My heart hurts, yet I rejoice. To have had the past 14 days with you is something that I will never forget. I honor you. I cherish you. I miss you. And I love you. You loved us all so well. Thank you for loving my family so deeply. And then the words from our own Eric Ranney, our favorite animal drummer. My father, Scott Ranney, the greatest man I ever knew, went on to be with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning at 12.23 a.m., my parents' anniversary is 12:23. Dad fought till his last breath. And once we got my sister Ruby on the phone, she told him, Dad, don't wait for me. And right then, Dad took his last breath. I hurt, but my dad is free of his decrepit, broken, and handicapped body, and for that, I rejoice. He touched the lives of more than can ever be counted, and his reward is great. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, Scott. I love you, Dad. And his daughter, Ruby, says, 
It has taken me several days to begin processing the loss of my dad. Today made it real. How does one go about describing devastation and loss like this? My dad was a man like no other. He saw worth and value where so many others did not. And he fought for me, nurtured me, and so many other things. But most of all, above all else, he loved me unconditionally. I love you, Dad. And then his, his wife, Pastor Arnie, ran and he says, here he is. The man that loved coffee and Christmas. And now he's loving his, eternal, his, his new heavenly home. He went there at 1223 this morning. 1223 is our anniversary. So he let me know we are celebrating our life today as he leaves the earth. You all know the incredible man he was. So all I will say for now is I miss him terribly. He gave me three beautiful children, 11 grandchildren, plus their mates, Brian and TJ's wife, Maggie, and a great-granddaughter. And I will miss his funny jokes, his kind, giving heart, and unending love for others. And he was famous for the saying, do not give your joy away, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I can honestly say that up until he left earth, he never gave his joy away. And now he is spreading it to everyone in heaven. And we are blessed that he has become one of the great cloud of clouds of witnesses to us all. I miss you so much, Scott, but rejoicing that you are so full of joy right now, my forever love. You know, I just want to encourage all of you because I know that Pastor Scott would want to encourage you with this. Again, there is no finer place to look for a testimony than the people who were closest to you for decades in work and the people of your own family. And this is what he would want you to know. I can tell you this right now. Pastor Scott would say there is one reason there is one reason and one reason only why my life was so incredibly that I could be able to, to see what I saw in my life. And that is because of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit of God showing me how his wonderful words of life that are recorded in the Bible apply to all of the various scenarios and circumstances. So I'm just going to tell you right now, you may not be as thrilled and happy and excited about some of the things that are going on in your life right now with some of the relationships that you've had. But this is what Pastor Scott would tell you, I can guarantee you, and I want to bear testimony to it. And that is, I don't care who you are. I don't care how bad your past has been. If you will make a decision to just do what Pastor Scott did for all of those years and begin to genuinely, sincerely look into the Bible and, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it applies to the different circumstances of life that you encounter. You will find yourself in that boat as well. You'll find yourself where people will have nothing but wonderful, profound things to say about you. So again, God bless you all, Pastor Scott. We appreciate the fact that you are now a part of the great cloud of witnesses. We're trusting that Jesus will pass that message on to you, that we appreciate the, the example that you gave to us, and we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I, I, I want to promise you I'm not going to hold you over more than an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously, like I say, this is a very important topic to me, and I love to talk about it, but I just could not begin to address even my favorite topic at such a time as this without letting you hear these fine and wonderful testimonies about Pastor Scott. So, at any rate, I think all of you have probably heard this phrase, well, maybe not all of you, 
I don't know if it's still popular today. When I was a kid, it was pretty popular. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I'm kind of curious. How many of you ever heard that, that statement that was made? I heard it a lot when I was a kid. And um, I guess what I would like to say is, first of all, you know, that's a worldly statement, obviously. But what does the Bible have to say about that? You know, is that, does that statement that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, does that meet the Bible's criteria of truth? Well, in actuality, the Bible says that words are extremely important. Not only the words that we speak, but also the words that we hear. We have plenty of admonitions that it's well worth our time and trouble to guard our heart with all diligence. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we understand that the Bible has said that, and, and we know is a fact, that, that God has sent us out into the world. He has an express purpose in that. And that is, he wants our lives to be a source of inspiration to the people that we come in contact with so that we have the opportunity for those people, especially those people who have never experienced what we have experienced, the uh, amazing joy of the indwelling presence of God himself, becoming a child of God, not because of any works of righteousness that we've done, but because of his amazing mercy. All we did is receive the gift that he gave. For crying out loud. I mean, that's the best deal ever. You know, we get to have the favor of God in spite of all of our problems and faults. But at any rate, here's the thing. As we go out into the world, we're going to hear all kinds of words spoken by people who don't share our values. And there is no stopping that. There is no preventing that because we're sent to go into that world. And the, and the Lord didn't send us to go out and argue and debate with people. He sent us to go into that world and we're going to hear those words and we're not going to start arguing with them and fighting about it. But we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to show us an opportunity where we get to speak a word into this situation and not in any kind of an argumentative way that has the potential to, to produce a ray of hope in someone who really hasn't had all that much hope in the past. Okay, So I'd like to look at for a moment here at Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. And as I read this, I want you to just think about this. I want you to recognize and realize that when I'm making this point, I'm making a distinction between the words that we're going to hear as we are going about our role in life and our responsibility of being representatives for the Lord and the words that we choose to listen to and hear and reflect upon when we're not in that capacity. When we're just kind of sitting around relaxing, maybe at home or whatever, you know, it's, it's, pretty, in, it's pretty easy to slip into a casual attitude about words. See, the devil would love you to think that there's nothing significant about words, that it's no big deal, you know, that it's not going to really affect you. But, but see, is that what the Bible really says? The Bible actually teaches us that there are two types of words. There are words of life or words that have the potential to lift and encourage and strengthen and, and uh, create hope and a future. And then there are words that the Bible simply calls death, words of death. So I want you to think about this. Words are actually containers. That's what they are. There is a physical part of a word. And then there is the spirit of the word that's in that physical part. The physical part is the part that you're hearing with your ear right now, or the part that you see that's written down somewhere. And that's the physical part of a word. But the spiritual part 
is the substance that those words contain. And the Bible makes it crystal clear that there's only two types of words. There's words that are full of life, and then there's words that are full of death. Death, by the Bible's definition, is not to cease to exist. It has to do with the state of being of that substance. So Jesus put it like this. He said, I have come that I might give you life and that I might give you it more abundantly. But that you have an enemy. He is the devil, and he comes with a goal as well. And he uses the same thing. I use words, but my words are full of life to paint a picture for you. The devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the way that he does it is by using words that don't have life in them, that instead are designed to put down, demean, belittle, and, and rob you of the potential so that you never recognize who and what you are and you never amount to what you could have been if you would have simply made the choice to take advantage of any and every opportunity to meditate and think about my words of life and get strengthened and built up. Well, in Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, in, uh, in verse 1, it says, Blessed happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks not and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk. And here's where I want to put a particular emphasis on nor sits down to rest and relax where the scornful and the mockers gather. I'm almost out of time, so I just want to share with you this one basic concept that I want you to get out of this. It's so very important that we understand that there is a big difference between the words that we're getting exposed to as we go through life uh, that we have no choice but to be exposed to those words. This is what Jesus said about that. He said, listen, when your heart is filled with the words of life, when you encounter words of death, he put it like this, no deadly thing that you shall drink will harm you. But there are words out there that are designed. Are sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me? Are you kidding? Come on. I mean, actually, wars, world wars have been fought over words. The devil uses words to create prejudice and pride and all kinds of values and things that are contrary to the things and the ideals that the word of God produces and, and promotes. But instead, he wants to create something in people that will drive them to a place where he will be able to kill, steal, and destroy anything and everything in your life that matters. And so God is saying, listen to me. Listen close. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law he meditates day and night, and he'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, and whatever he does is going to prosper, and his leaf isn't going to wither. He's going to be exceptional. You want to fulfill your destiny. You want to become all that God has designed for you to become. Don't take words casually. Don't take them for granted. Recognize and realize something. Make an honest appraisal of your life and ask yourself, where, where am I spending the most time? Am, am I listening to, to more words of life? Or am I listening to more words of death? Because one of the things that we're going to find out that we see clearly in the Bible. It puts it simply like this. It says, don't be deceived. 
The devil wants to deceive you and make you think that words are insignificant. There isn't anything insignificant about words. The Lord Jesus Christ himself by, said, by your words you shall be justified or by your words you shall be contemned. Condemned. And he said, and you will give an account for every idle word on the day of judgment. What is that day of judgment? I'm just putting it to you like this. The devil has an agenda that he wants to promote, all right? When he says, by your words, you shall be justified, the Bible makes it clear we can't help but encounter terrible, awful circumstances and situations that will come our way in life. But if we have the words of life on the inside of us, and we, in, when we encounter those circumstances that are contrary to the promises of God, we know what these promises are, and we stand on those words, then those words are not going to be able to overcome us, and even though we just went through a terrible thing, it'll be just as if it never happened, justified. He said, by your words, you shall be justified. If you get the word of God in your heart. I don't care what happens to you. I don't care how bad it is. God will get you out of that mess. By your words, you shall be justified. Or if you don't have the words of life in there, and instead you just walk in the counsel and the advice and the admonition of ungodly people, then by your words, you'll be condemned to go through that terrible circumstance that you could have got out of if you had just chose and made a decision to meditate upon his wonderful words of life. And I am two minutes over. So <laughs> God bless you and forgive me for going over. But I just want to encourage you. God's got a plan where you're concerned. But it really starts with having an appreciation for the significance and not taking it lightly to just allow the wrong kind of seeds to be planted in your life through words. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Father, I just thank you for this wonderful people. I thank you for the hunger in all of our hearts to discover the truth that's not only going to be advantageous for us, but enable us to be as helpful as we want to be to the people that we come in contact who are struggling with so many things today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.